Hello and welcome to this EKS Security Best Practices Guide. In this video, we're gonna go over how to secure the nodes, the containers, the cluster, and how to shift left all of those checks so your engineers in the organization are actually enjoying working on your Kubernetes cluster. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Shimon Toltz and I'm a CNCF ambassador and AWS community hero. So in this video, we're going to go over all of the EKS security best practices. And we're going to do that based on the AWS guide that they've actually released. Now, this guide is very, very comprehensive. It has a lot of information to consume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on three main areas and do some live demos to show you how to go by them. So first of all, we're gonna talk about how to secure our containers. Then we're gonna talk about how to secure the nodes. And finally, we're gonna go over how to prevent misconfigurations on the cluster layer. So let's talk about container image security. So what can we do in order to secure our containers? So the first thing is to actually use the minimal footprint container that we can put our hands on. And for that, Docker actually offers a Docker scratch container. So what is a scratch container, you might ask? It's actually a container that has no uh, official distribution on it. And what we do is we can take an executable and just put it in. So let me show you how it looks like. So I've prepared a Docker file here. And in this Docker file, we're going to take a, a code that we write in, no, in a Go. And it's just a simple hello world Go code, yes? And we're going to use a Golang Alpine, which we'll talk about in a minute, a Golang image in order to just perform the build. So we're doing Go get, Go build, and we're actually compiling the Go executable. And then you will notice here that we're using from scratch. It means that it has nothing in it. And we're just copying the executable and we're putting it into an entry point in our container. In this, in this case, it's a, a go bin hello. And what will happen is that we actually have no distribution. It just runs the executable directly. Now, you might ask yourself, but wait, Shim, uh, what if I use Node.js or uh, I use Python and not, uh, you know, fancy Go or Rust or uh, compiled C++ binaries? So what should I do? So in this case, the next best scenario is to use the smallest footprint image possible. So for this task, um, I can offer several uh, solutions. So number one is using an Alpine uh, Docker reg uh, distribution. So it's a minimal Docker image um, that is only five megabytes in size. And it is very, very small and narrow. And it is built for this purpose of actually uh, having the smallest footprint. Another option, uh, if you would like, you can use the official Debian images and they have a dash slim option. And this also provides a very, very slim Docker container um, because usually you just want to run your program and you don't care about all the other you know, things that Linux comes with for, let's say, if you have a desktop. So um, it is really nice. Um, now, we even have a, even a nicer solution. So let's say you're using a Node.js. So the official uh, Node.js uh, Docker uh, image actually comes pre-built with, uh, for example, version 12, 20 container with Alpine or with Bullseye Slim. Bullseye is the latest version of Debian. Uh, for example, P uh, Python offers the same thing, pre-built images with uh, Slim or Alpine. So this way you can reduce the footprint. So after you, you, you know, made the best uh, effort to use the smallest images, uh, the next thing is we have to actually scan them for vulnerabilities and uh, uh, issues during the composition of the supply chain build, right? Because you're getting an image, it might have a lot of layers, you're building your uh, application, maybe you're using a lot of NPM packages and guess what? They might have, and they absolutely have a lot of vulnerabilities in them. So what can you do in order to protect yourself? So I can offer several solutions. Uh, the first one is a uh, Docker from uh, version 4.17 offers the ability to use Docker Scout. And Docker Scout uh, is currently uh, in early access and it is currently free. 
And this allows us to scan an image and identify if it has any issues. So uh, as you can see, there is a Scout CLI. It is also integrated with Docker Desktop. Um, and it, uh, the feature provides detailed insights into composition and security of container images. So let's look at how it works. So um, if I go and do Docker Scout, I will get the uh, options that I have. So first thing we can do, we can do a quick view uh, and let's use, you know, something old, Node 14. And uh, we're gonna quick view this image. Guess what? I'm sure it's gonna have issues as you can see. And um, so our image is Node 14. And as you can see, it is uh, integrated natively within Docker. I did not install anything else. And now it offers us to do two things. First of all, I can check the CVEs. And secondly, I can also um, go and check the recommendation. So let's run Docker Scout CVEs. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be a, a lot of stuff in here. Uh, so we can actually see each one. What is the problem? What is the link to the CV itself? Um, and it is categorized by the severity. And the second thing we can do is run Docker Scout recommendations and see uh, what we're gonna get. So again, this is uh, recommendations that are uh, deeper and you can see when was it uh, pushed and you can see the information about it. Now, another option, and there are many, many companies that offer, uh, you know, security tools. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm showing the native Docker one. And the second thing I wanna show is ECR. So uh, ECR will allow us to uh, perform a container image scanning. So I'm here in my AWS dashboard, I go into an image and then I can see that the basic scanning is done. And the last time that it was scanned was in my 31st. Um, and I have five, five, uh, 15 undefined uh, vulnerabilities. Now, what I can do is run a uh, scan and now it is invoking a scan. Um, and it is scanning the images that I have inside of my registry. Now, images, um, while it is scanning are like milk, they get, you know, spoiled and rotten. So as you build an image, you might scan it and it, it will be very, very good. But as time progresses, uh, it's going to have more and more issues in it. So the, the scan is finished and guess what? We found a critical vulnerability in this image. So if I go into it in the dashboard, I can see one critical and I can see the one that is, um, occurred and I can go and read about it and understand what I have to do. Now, I'll be honest, many times there are like issues, for example, this one is in a package curl. Uh, you know, if it's um, using some Ubuntu image and the curl executable inside of the Ubuntu image has a vulnerability and I never use it, you might ask yourself, how important is that? Uh, that is for you to, to answer, but uh, the most important thing is to perform periodic scans of your images. So for example, in ECR, you have the basic and you have the advanced scanning, whatever you choose, but it's important to periodically and nightly scan the images and to have actions based on those results because your images will get spoiled and every day that they're sitting in your registry, they're getting rotten. And if you're not checking, you're gonna think everything's okay, but your container is running on Kubernetes are actually vulnerable. So how can you protect the nodes, the instances that actually run the workloads for you? So first of all, if you're running on Fargate, uh, you can skip to the next section. But uh, if you cannot run on Fargate because you want to have spot instances, you want to have GPU optimized instances or any other limitation, you actually need to take care of the instance. So first of all, the most important thing is taking care of the operating system that is running on your instance that has the kubelet connected to your EKS cluster. So again, the same thing as in containers, you wanna use a purposely built operating system AMIs that are designed to run for containers. And in order to do so, I recommend you use the Battle Rocket Linux-based operating system purposely built to run containers. This is an image that has been released by AWS and it is tailor-made with security in hand as a first-class citizen baked in and it is the highest uh, security possible operating system image that you can use. So you just go in and you have to perform a build of the uh, AMI 
And then once you have your flavor, you can go and use it in your EKS. Now, after you perform and build this image, guess what? It is not done. Because same thing as with containers, those operating systems are getting rotten and they have vulnerabilities being released. So what do people do? There are two options. Option number one, every time that the new image spins up, in the user data, you go, you perform the security updates every time the image spins up. And now, this is good in terms of um, removing the overhead of having to do it, but uh, every time you have a scaling event and a new image spins up, you're gonna pay with resources for, and you're gonna actually pay with startup time because it's gonna get, take time for this image to install all of the updates. The second thing you can do is actually build a, I call it a bakery. And every night or every week or every time you decide, you actually perform an automated build um, of this image for yourself. Now, luckily enough, there is a great um, uh, service by AWS called EC2 Image Builder. I call it the bakery. And what it does, it allows us to have a golden image and you go into the console, you create a sequence, and you say which image to, to start from, which operations to do, for example, security updates, and then to bake it into a golden image and make sure to use it um, with your containers. So uh, what I recommend doing is um, to perform uh, your auto-scaling events and to have the policy to evict the oldest instance every time. Because this way it will make sure that you do not have an instance that is running for, I don't know, a lot of time because it just happened to be, it was never selected to be evicted. And you can do this in your auto scaling group uh, configuration or in Carpenter or whatever uh, uh, scaling tools that you're using. Uh, other um, best practices in terms of configuring your containers is instead of having SSH access, you need to use SSM Session Manager. It is really more secure. Uh, deploy workloads into private subnets. It means that you can actually have your EKS cluster running in a VPC that is not connected to the internet, I mean the nodes, and all access is going to be done through ingress controllers and via ALB um, connections. Another thing is to run uh, Amazon Inspector to assess the hosts and vulnerabilities and to see if there are any issues with the operating system. And of course, to periodically check for any compliance issues and that your images are working within the best practices. So let's talk about protecting the Kubernetes cluster. So if we look at the state of Kubernetes security report by Red Hat, we can see that in the results, the respondents were asked regarding what are the most common problems that they have. And one of the, the problems is detecting misconfiguration. So actually, there are many issues that could be caused by misconfiguring our Kubernetes workloads in the Kubernetes YAMLs, in the Helm charts, in customized files, and so on. So it is very important to make sure that we follow the development standards that fit those criteria. So what does that mean? So if we look at, uh, for example, we have a set of built-in rules that I took from the, the tree documentation, we can see that the EKS security best practices guide was codified into some actual practical uh, misconfigurations that could be detected. So for example, make sure that you prevent containers from escalating privileges. Make sure that your container has a read-only root file system. And the list goes on and on and on. Now, those issues happen because Kubernetes is built to be very flexible. But on the other hand, it is very open and it brings a, a lot of possibilities for people to misconfigure it, especially when engineers copy paste the configuration from the internet. And you know, in most cases, the default configuration will not prevent you from escalating privileges. So if as an engineer, I create my workload, you know, just regularly without knowing it, it will most likely have misconfigurations in it. So what can we do in order to prevent those misconfigurations? So I recommend several things. 
I am a big believer in automation. So first of all, you need to go and get tools to automate the process of identifying those issues. So um, an example of a tool could be uh, Open Policy Agents Conf Test, which is a set of um, policies that can be applied and run in dev and CI CD in order to scan your configuration for misconfigurations. So um, it is, uh, if we go into installation instructions, it is just a regular, you know, brew install and, uh, or install it on Linux. And then you can choose a lot of examples from different infrastructure as code providers. So for example, if we take a Kubernetes, we can see that we have uh, a policy example here. So there is a deployment YAML, and this is a regular YAML that has some misconfigurations. And uh, in this case, there is a policy here that it is written in Lego, in Rego, which is a, a language that OPA is using, and it is probing it for different uh, types. So uh, for example, it wants to make sure that uh, we have labels. So those are the recommended uh, labels by um, Kubernetes. So um, let me show you how it can look like uh, when running that. So I have a pre pre-compiled the set here. So if I go into the deployment YAML, this is the file that is in, com in compliant. So if I run the uh, conf test uh, test suite, uh, so I'm telling it conf test test, use all the policies in the policy folder and run it against the deployment.yaml file. And now it is telling me that this file has some misconfigurations, containers must not, must not run as root, deployment uh, must provide app release labels, and this allows you to actually have a set of rules that you check during deployment. Now you can use uh, OPA and ConfTest. You can use Kiverno. Um, and there are also KSPM solutions, Kubernetes security posture management solutions that actually run on your cluster. You can use the tree, you can use OPA's gatekeeper. And what it does, it uh, integrates with the Kubernetes native APIs and it leverages the admission controllers and webhooks in order to intercept any request that it is being made into Kubernetes. So let's say you perform a kubectl apply and you try to apply a manifest in, into your uh, Kubernetes cluster. If it is in compliant, the admission controller will actually block it from going in. So this is the final piece between uh, securing the containers, the nodes, and this is the way to, con to uh, secure the cluster. And, and this way you can make sure that on the one hand, developers and engineers are free to make changes and deploy workloads, but on the other hand, they follow a s set of guidelines and rules uh, using your guardrails.